With new 7000 series AMD CPUs soon to be released, AMD said, hey, don't forget about our GPUs. AMD did sponsor this video, however, they have not received this video beforehand, nor any influence over the video in Dreamcore's opinions. With that out of the way, let's get started. It was a dark and terrible two years with the GPU shortage. Well, a shortage for everybody but miners. Within the past few months, consumers are able to find GPUs in stock and below MSRP prices. With AMD's 7000 series CPUs drumming up excitement and GPUs finally available, we're ready to start building again. We actually avoided talking about GPUs on this channel because we felt with the shortage it wasn't right. But we do think it's a great time to do some comparisons. Let's see how AMD CPU GPU stacks up against an AMD CPU NVIDIA GPU build. Let's talk about one benefit in having an all AMD build is their adrenaline software. With a few clicks, we can overclock both the AMD CPU and GPU, then quickly enable features such as Radeon Super Resolution or RSR. There are other features of the adrenaline software such as stream recording, instant replay, but we're not really reviewing those features at this time. With an AMD CPU and an NVIDIA GPU, it will require multiple pieces of software to achieve the same outcome. Adrenaline can still be used to overclock the AMD CPU, and it's really up to the person if they want multiple pieces of software or just one piece of software. Our recommendation is if you're going all AMD CPU and GPU combo, then the adrenaline software is going to be easier for new and veteran PC builders alike, as it's a one-stop shop. The next big talking point is going to be the DLSS versus the FSRS 2.0 debate. We're all fans and enthusiasts of any technology that can squeeze out more performance and FPS in our games. AMD has been working with game developers to get FSR 2.0 added to as many of the AAA titles and has slowly closed the gap with NVIDIA DLSS numbers. Both AMD and NVIDIA keep a list on their website of current games that are supported. Personally, I feel the AMD page is a little easier to navigate as it allows for one-click filtering at the top. However, it would be nice to have a counter showing the total number of games when filtering on a specific feature such as Super Resolution came up to 98 titles as of today. We decided to focus on the average gamer setup on the bench with an AMD 5600X CPU, and two GPUs we are comparing are an AMD RX 6600 and the RTX 3060, very similar systems. The three games we selected were Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, and Spider-Man Remastered. All games were set to 1080p and the highest graphic options available for each game. We then did some passes with both FSR and DLSS on and off. Because FSR 2.0 can also be enabled for NVIDIA GPUs, we also ran those tests too. When enabling FSR, we also chose to stick with the quality profile as that is what we feel the normal gamer is going to use. The takeaway from the numbers is clear. There is never going to be a one winner for everything. It's going to be up to you as the gamer to decide by reading online and watching reviews like this video in hopes to make the best purchasing decision. If your monitor is a 1080p at 60Hz, then all games with FSR and DLSS are going to run amazing for your setup. There will be cases where FSR does better, such as Horizon Zero Dawn, but then Spider-Man FSR and DLSS using NVIDIA was clearly better. Don't buy for the future because it's impossible to know. List out your favorite games you like to play and try enabling FSR and DLSS. Either way, as the consumer, there's something to be gained. In terms of power consumption, the RX 6600 bench was around 189 watts average during most gameplays, where the RTX 3060 was around 263 watts. This does mean that some adrenaline overclocking of the AMD CPU and GPU could squeeze out more performance and end up costing the same as the AMD CPU and NVIDIA GPU system. 
There's one last point we want to bring up that is ray tracing. If you must have ray tracing, then today NVIDIA GPUs have a big advantage in almost every game. Thus, we didn't add, even add these to our test case. But with the rumor mills in full swing and AMD launching its RDNA 3 GPUs in the near future, they are supposed to have better ray tracing support. Check back with us as we'll be reviewing the new AMD GPUs when they are ready for launch. That's it for today's video, comparing an AMD CPU GPU combo with an AMD NVIDIA GPU combo. We hope you liked the video and please check back in the near future because we do have some upcoming content with the new 7000 series AMD CPUs. Thanks and have a good day.